Welcome to St. Timothy Lutheran Church in Tarpon Springs, Florida, where we are currently enduring 70-degree weather, and we are also a caring church, church sharing, sharing Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ with the world, world offering God. help, hope, and home. We are glad that you've joined us here uh, to worship the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're in this thing called liturgy, which means the work of the people, which means we gather with folks around the world and throughout time to proclaim the gospel in a way that's faithful. And uh, so we, we had Christmas, and Christmas talks about the incarnation, God becoming flesh, and, and then Epiphany is God being made known uh, through Jesus Christ, that he's revealed himself to us, things like um, changing water into wine, uh, or in Mark, as we've seen, driving out demons and doing uh, amazing things that are signs of the kingdom, and today the transfiguration. We're at the end of Epiphany, and we're getting ready to head to Lent. And Lent is a word that means springtime, when dead things come to life in a new and glorious way. And so we focus on our baptismal identity and what God has already done to us and for us and with us in the Holy Spirit being inside of us and now awakening us as we deny those things in the world that are, are pulling us away from that identity to allow the Spirit to help us grow towards our resurrection identity. And so Lent is coming up. And we'll be talking about those disciplines. In fact, Ash Wednesday is this Wednesday, the 17th. And uh, we pray that maybe you'll join us. In fact, uh, with our confirmation class, they're going to be joining us on Zoom and our Wednesday night Bible study. All of them are coming together. We're going to have a little brief conversation about Lent, and then we're going to have the worship service and watch that together uh, and worship together. And if you'd like that ID number, it's 242-640-241. Again, that's 242 640 241, and that worship service will be available for you throughout Ash Wednesday, and it's unfortunate that we just would do it online at this time and, and don't have the imposition of the ashes, but we will be explaining many things about that and uh, about Lent as we uh, head into that 40 days to match the 40 days Jesus was in the wilderness, amongst other things biblically, uh, we take that time. Uh, our Sunday school lessons are still online, if you'd like those, for our young ones all the way up through adult. Also, our Centering Prayer Group has started again Wednesdays from 1 to 1.45. So you can come and go as your schedule allows, but that's Wednesdays from 1 to 1.45 for the Centering Prayer Group. You don't have to have any experience to be there. Just come and join if you're interested or curious. Also, our, our cross trainers, our young people, all the way up to high school, uh, gather together for our youth group. And that will be this Sunday, the 14th, this Sunday, um, from at 5 o'clock. So uh, if you'd like to come join us, the same number that I shared before, 242-640-241 and Zoom, uh, to come and join us. Also, you should have received your prayer partners. If you haven't, contact us here at the office. We're so grateful for folks that are doing that during this time. Such an encouragement that folks reach out and just continue to pray for each other and those needs and maybe write a note or send a text or give a call as well, but you don't have to. And then each month you get three to five more that you can be praying for. So let's stay connected in that way. Uh, prayer requests, uh, please send those in or your praise reports so we can hold them up in worship and people can be knowing what to pray for in our congregation and where those needs are. And again, your weekly offering, uh, if you'd like to continue to contribute to the work of the gospel here at St. Timothy, and it, it really helps us to um, trust God rather than the money when we give it back uh, to his work and his purpose. You can do that Give Plus online. Uh, we have an online link on our website. Uh, also, you can do it through bill pay at your bank, or you can just bring it by here at the church. Oh, and also to let you know for our Lenten journey, um, we have these um, devotionals that are online, so you can get them through the website online, or if you want to pick them up here at the church, uh, you can do that. So just stop by the church if you want those devotionals in a hard copy, or you can have them online online. Uh, that's coming up for our Lenten journey together too. So each day we have a, a different devotion for you. That said, let's focus our hearts on our relationship with Jesus Christ as we begin the worship of our Lord through our prelude. Christ the true and only 
Now let us rise as we call upon the living and triune God to lead our hearts in worship in spirit and in truth this day. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. I invite you to humbly kneel before our God and to make confession in your heart. That is to repent and turn your heart and life back to God's heart and life. And if you cannot kneel, you may certainly stand or sit. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all of our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away. And we are claimed by God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn, Christ, or no, shine Jesus, shine.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Glory to God in the highest, the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise. Let us join our hearts and voices together in the prayer of the day. Almighty God, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop into our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son and illumine the world with your image through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the proclamation of God's word. Today, the first reading is 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Now, when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way to Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elisha said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they were both standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elijah said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted to you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of 
Fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended into a, in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. This ends the first reading. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Second reading is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 to 6. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Here ends the second reading. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. of eternal life for today are recorded in the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, uh, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. 
Suddenly when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Well, welcome, welcome for the children's sermon uh, today. Actually, if you're watching on Sunday, uh, it is Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day is a day uh, when we remember actually a guy named Valentine. And the picture that you see right now is a picture of uh, actually a priest. He was a follower of Jesus and loved the Lord with all his heart. And a time when they were having hard persecution, he lived about 270 A.D., uh, also the Roman Empire, Claudius, he was trying to build his army, and so he made it illegal to get married because he didn't want young men going off making families. He wanted them to fight in the army. And so Valentine, he quietly and secretly uh, married people, and then he actually was taken to jail. And while he was in jail, uh, he still told people about the love of Jesus. And one in particular that was told was of a jailer's daughter And he would, to pass his time, write notes to her. And right before he was executed for his faith in Christ, he wrote to her a note and signed it, Your Valentine, telling us about this incredible love that God has. So, that leads us to the practices that we have today. Um, We send people cards. And those cards say, listen to me, listen to me. I love you. You're special. You matter. I thought of you. And so we'll send a card like this. Actually, my wife is going to see this, and this is the card that I'm giving her. I'm sending her this card. But also, I made her a card. This kind of reminds me of what her heart would be like and her shining eyes and just that she's my everyday Valentine. And, and it's a way of kind of letting folks know you love them, love them, love them. Listen to me. I love you. And you're special, and I thought of you. And so today, when we hear the gospel lesson, Jesus shining, when we think of Jesus, Jesus is like God's valentine to say, listen, listen, listen to him. It's, he's telling you how much I love you, that I'm thinking of you all the time, and that you're so special to me and precious. No matter who you are, hearing my voice now, God wants us to know through Jesus, you are precious and special, and he loves you so very much. And so just like we might make someone a card and send it out to them, Uh, we are sent out to share with the world God's love that he has first given to us. So now you know a little bit more about what Valentine's Day. Make someone's day special and let them know anytime, not just Valentine's Day, how much you think of them and care for them and love them, just as God has done for us. Thanks for coming up, and uh, we're going to continue with our hymn of the day, How Good Lord to Be Here.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Someone in the family, a loved one, reaches a marking point in their life. You're out taking a hike and you get to this plateau and you see this beautiful area. Or, hey, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers won the Super Bowl. And you're in this moment, you're just drinking it in. And eventually someone says, hey, hey, get together and let's take a picture. And, and there's this rolling of the eyes and, and, and taking a break. And you, and you go and you get a picture. <laughs> my sons were teaching me on my phone. I don't have any storage left because I have so many pictures on there. These days, there aren't many good time moments that we don't try to capture and film and post and send into the cloud somewhere so that we can keep them. We kind of want to stay in those good times and remember them and keep this moment. And so it's trying to hold on to that moment and not let it slip away. And our family, though, during this pandemic time, it's, it's really brought us a lot of joy, too, because we go back and we look at those pictures and we remember those moments and we remember the blessings that we have as we tell the stories again and maybe even see them in a different light. And my wife will inevitably say something like, see, aren't you glad that we took those pictures? And if you can understand that, you can understand part of what worship is about, liturgy, the work of the people. When we give our praise, it's like snapshots from God's family album. Oh, yeah, 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 remember this when Elijah went up to the end chariots? Oh, yeah. And we tell that story. We recount God's mighty acts, which is what the word praise means. And we do that together as God's people. So at the beginning of the Epiphany season, for example, we said, hey, hey, remember this snapshot when Jesus went into the water and he came up and the dove descended and the voice came from above and said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. We remember that snapshot. And today we have one where it says six days before. Well, what was going on six days before? Well, that's when Jesus asked his disciples, he said, who do you say that I am? And Peter blurted out, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And he says, blessed are you, Simon Peter, because you didn't figure this out on your own, but God revealed this to your heart through the power of the Holy Spirit. Snapshot. Paul talks about God unveiling the gospel for us, making it known. These snapshot moments that we want to hang on to, they're so dear to us. Once Jesus' identity is established as Messiah, he returns to talking about his main mission with them in that one snapshot. He says, now that you understand, I must undergo great sufferings, be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribe, and be killed, and three days I'll rise again. I'm telling you this so that when it happens, you'll know and you'll have hope during the dark times that will be ahead of you. So that you'll walk by faith and not by sight, meaning not by your understanding of what you see or know by the circumstances around you. When Jesus mentions all the rejection, suffering, and death, we kind of chime in with Peter and go, hey, can't you just kind of avoid all of that? I mean, after all, we kind of want to get to Easter, but we don't want to go through the cross. We would rather stay here on this shiny mountaintop with you because it feels good for us. We want the glory, we want the prosperity, we want the blessing, we want the healing, we want the sensational feeling that comes from God alone. And Luther describes this as a theology of glory. When we think of God as one who's there to serve us and what we get out of it, like an instant healing or that he would bring us wealth or other things. Rather than a theology of the cross, which focuses on how we might serve God by serving others around us. Theology simply means the way we understand God and his call and how we are to live. And different people sometimes have different theologies and ways of understanding. Heaven have mercy on us all. Jesus describes a difficult thing for us. He says this, If any of you want to become my followers, let them deny themselves. Take up their cross and follow me. That's our Lord. It's very appropriate to think about that as we go into Lent this 
springtime, this 40 days. A great verse maybe to think about is when Jesus says in the Gospel of John, a seed must fall into the ground and die before it produces new life. And so we need to be thinking as God's people and we enter into this journey together, what, what do I need to deny myself of, to give up, to lose, to die to, in the hope of the resurrection and this final future that's so much bigger than all my problems, which are going to melt away in time. Transfiguration Sunday, it's a day that reaches the summit of epiphany, that is Christ being made known Today is a future snapshot for the resurrection and for heaven ahead. If you don't understand it all, don't feel bad. Neither did the disciples when it was going on. They had to live life a little bit to understand. In Mark, the resurrected Christ, if you've ever read it, does not appear physically in the resurrection when the tombs open. But we get a glimpse here when he's with Moses and Elijah who had gone, been gone for hundreds and thousands of years in an earthly sense. Can you imagine after the resurrection sharing this picture and coming down and James and John and they're talking and they're saying, oh, I remember the transfiguration. Let me tell you the story. It makes sense now. It was a glimpse of the final outcome into eternity and the resurrection that happened. He was letting us know where nothing is lost to God and all are alive because God's the God of the living. Jesus took Peter and James and John with him up the mountain, and it says that his, his clothes turned dazzling white, whiter than any bleach on earth could have gotten them, almost like he's shining with the sun. And then you have these guys that were dead for so long, or Elijah taken up into heaven, and they're right there with him at that time. Remember, Moses was chosen by God to be the great lawgiver. And the law reveals our sin and the fact that we can't make it right with God. The more we try to make it right with God, we can't. Jesus will fulfill what the law requires to make us right with God. Now we can trust the work that he's done for us on the cross and the resurrection rather than our own sacrifices where we fall short again and again. Elijah was chosen by God to be the great prophet that is a mouthpiece of God, one that speaks God's promises for us, Jesus fulfills all the promises that God had ever spoken, and we can trust this word now for our living. We can trust his promises. Both law and prophecy are fulfilled till we only see Jesus. To him alone be the glory. Amen? Amen. I could see us in this moment if we were up there at that time pulling out our phones going, Moses, Elijah, Jesus, get together a little bit, okay? Hold on a second. We just want to get you, and, and, and we, we try to pull them together. I didn't say, I just can't wait to post this to let folks know I was here at this moment. And Peter recognizes how good it is to be here in this moment. And he wants to do something when God is already doing something. That kind of reminds me of us. Every time I hear this, I think of our own selves, busying ourselves to do God's work when he's already doing work in our midst and through us. When things are good, who doesn't want to set up camp and stay, right? We like to keep God where we can find him as well. In our frenzied busyness, we miss that God is doing something already. Did you ever think about it in this digital age? I've lived long enough to know what it was like before this digital age. And people are so busy recording moments that they're not living them. We're so busy trying to film everything that we're not in the moment. That kind of reminds me of Peter today. Take note that according to the Jewish expectation, to kind of help Peter out here, from the prophet Zechariah in the 14th chapter, if you want to read about it, verses 16 to 21, God would usher in the new age, the day of the Lord, with the Feast of Booths, a festival that God commanded that was kept by the Jews for centuries when they went up to Jerusalem to remember God's provision in the wilderness after the exodus from slavery. Which might explain Peter's desire to build booths, convinced that the end times are coming. And the feast of booths was upon them. Or maybe they were remembering Malachi 4, verses 4 through 6, where Moses is mentioned and Elijah is promised to return before the day of the Lord. 
Along with Peter, we come to understand it's not our job to make a dwelling place, a home for God. This is God's work, to transfigure us into a dwelling place for the crucified and risen Christ inside of all of us as a community, not just one of us. This is more than a a picture spot. This is the big picture. God is at work in Jesus to save all of creation and all time. The picture reveals the shining light of God has come down to us. There's the gospel. Jesus comes down to show us God. We, we've said it for centuries, actually, as God's people. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, we say in our creed. Jesus leaves the perfection of glory to embrace abandonment, ridicule, suffering, and death on the cross. Why? Who would do that? Why not just avoid pain? Why not, if you're king of all creation, just stay in that glorious place? Why bother with us? Well, the reason is love. God is love. He shows us the true measure of love that all of this doesn't mean anything if I can't share it with you and I'll make any sacrifice that we can be together. It's the heart of the gospel. For God so loved us that he laid down his life on the cross to save our life eternally. God only asks that we believe and live out of that belief so that we might have abundant life. With the disciples, we stand in the mystery of this undeserved grace that shines upon us on this mountaintop. Many of us feel that Jesus in his holiness is out of reach. And as we follow him, no matter how hard we try to follow, we know that we fall dreadfully short. But this isn't a story about us going up. It's a story about Jesus coming down to be with us and for us through thick and thin life and death into new life. So that we might live in hope, knowing that wherever we may go, Christ is there ahead of us. And that where Christ is now, we will someday be. Jesus leads them back down into daily life towards suffering, confusion, and the cross. Jesus leads us down into the endlessness of everyday life that we experience, especially in this pandemic down into the nitty-gritty details of our misunderstandings, our squabblings, our anxieties, and our disbelief, down into the religious and political quarrels of the day that we hear all the time, down into our jealousies, our rivalries, our poverty, our pain, our pandemics. On the way down the mountain, it's as if Jesus says, remember this snapshot of this moment and tell it after I've been resurrected. Because they didn't understand at that moment. I mean, how could you understand at that moment? Whoever saw a resurrected person at that point, how can you even conceive of it at that point until they had experienced it and seen it? Did you ever listen to a song when you were little and you liked the beat and you liked the song, but then you listen to it when you're older and you understand what they're saying and you hear it differently? Or when we look back on pictures I can imagine my family laughing around the family table and and we're looking at these pictures and somehow you understand more about what was going on at the time than when you were there in it, right? Because life has unfolded more and now you see it in a new way. Or I I think about the Thompsons, uh, Trevor Thompson, naval officer and his wife Justina and their three kids. They they just moved out to California and they're out there right now and and, uh, they had to leave the children with grandparents in Nevada and, and I'm just thinking of them pulling out pictures of their kids because they long to be with them and what comfort that brings them at that moment. Just like the pictures of God's people, his faithfulness, bring us comfort. The picture today prepares us for Lent from here on zeroing in on the cross as we leave the mountaintop toward our future beyond the suffering, beyond the cross, to the resurrection, to eternal glory. That's our final future A helpful picture to pull out when you're in the wilderness, when times are hard, when you don't understand, when things are difficult. A reminder in our impossible darkness that God will do what he has promised to do, as he always has. 
Go back and look at the pictures in the Bible. Evident there in our family album, which we call the Holy Scriptures. I have a snapshot in my heart, the end of my dad's earthly life. Maybe some of you knew him, Buck. And when we would go to see him, as we were getting ready to leave, he would hold me by the shoulders. He would look into my eyes and he would just smile. It was an endless gaze that I just couldn't escape. And he'd usually say one thing over and over again. He'd say, oh, I love you more than you know. And it was almost like he forgot that he said it and then he'd say it again. Oh, I love you more than you know. When mind and body were slipping away, his heart eked out. And there I was, just sort of trapped in that moment of his smile. And I can still see it in my heart. Maybe you've had moments when you just smile because this is your beloved. Today, we have a picture of Almighty God smiling at us. Did you ever think of the transfiguration that way? As his son's heart is revealed to us, acknowledging, it's going to be all right. Listen to my son. He knows the way. Here. Here. Can you see God smiling when the cloud overshadowed them? This is my beloved. Listen to him. This Lent, what are disciples to do? How about listen? Working on our listening. I, I was talking to someone on the phone the other day. They said, well, you know, let's say one thing about you as a pastor is you actually listen to me. Or at least I think you are. I mean, listening, like Mary, sitting at the feet of Jesus, immersed in his presence and in his words, taking everything in. And Jesus says, this is the first thing, the important thing, and it won't be taken away from her. The verb tense of this word, listen, is present imperative. You remember that? Present imperative. Implying continuing action, a command. Which means, he's really saying, keep on listening to him. Keep on listening to him. Be attentive. Obey everything that Jesus says and does. It will lead to abundant life. It is a word to be heard by disciples in every place and time. And again and again in our lives. Keep on listening to Jesus. Not the news around us. Not the stuff going on. Not the circumstances that we don't understand. Keep on listening to Jesus and stay focused on him, it brings life to our hearts, not death. Listen to Jesus, his life, his word, our family album that we share together. Listen and follow what Jesus has shown and taught us. It is one thing to admire Jesus. To obey him is something else. The word obedience, it means to respond to his word. Christian faith is not a retreat from reality. But it's a new way to engage in reality. Today, Jesus gives his followers a picture of how it all turns out. From now on, they live knowing how it ends, or, or better yet, that it doesn't end. So we enter into the valley of the shadow with confidence and courage. We follow Jesus in the way of the cross, willingly going down into the suffering of others in love, as our master did for us. Trusting that God will be faithful and keep his promises to us. May the Holy Spirit strengthen us to deny ourselves this Lent and turn to God with all of our hearts in true repentance. Knowing that God has come down to our darkest valley with a light that is stronger than darkness. And that God's light will guide us home. And may the peace of God which passes all of our understanding Keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. The splendor of the King, both in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries, trembles at his voice.
Let us join our hands and minds as we reaffirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe, believe in, in one God, God the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, earth of all, all that is seen, seen and unseen. We, we believe, believe in, in one Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, the only Son of God, God eternally begotten, begotten of the Father, God from God, God light, light from light, light true God from true God, God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the gospel, proclaimed in word and deed, for communities of faith far and near, and for all who show the face of Christ throughout the world, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For creation, sun, moon, and stars, life forming in the dark earth and ocean deep, mountains, clouds, and storms, and creatures seen and unseen, and for the Holy Spirit's guidance in our stewardship of God's creation, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For those responsible for safety and protection, for emergency responders and security guards, attorneys and advocates, civil servants and leaders of governments, that they witness to mercy and justice throughout the world, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. We pray for all who suffer this day, especially those on our prayer list, those in the deep sanctuary of our hearts right now. We pray for our country, that you would bring healing. We pray for all of those suffering with COVID, loved ones around them, essential workers, those who are making a difference. Please uphold them and sustain them. Be with Tom Hill and Allison Anderson and their healing. For Marianne Hammond's daughter, Cheryl Reff, with her cancer treatment. For Marion and April Lear, Helen Williams, Donna Hewlin, Grayson, a two-year-old leukemia patient awaiting a transplant. For these and for other concerns, Lord, we place them into your care. And we ask that Christ, our healer, transform sickness into health, loneliness into companionship, bereavement into consolation, and suffering into peace. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. For companions on life's journey in this worshiping community, for loved ones who cannot be with us this day, and for guidance during struggles we face, that God's glory is revealed around and among us, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. We thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for all your many blessings. Forgive us when we don't recognize, celebrate, and share those. May we do that as a sign of our hope in your coming kingdom and trust that you will provide for us everything that we need, that we might live boldly for you. Thank you, Lord, for you. Thank you for an opportunity to worship. Thank you for Tom Hill, who had successful surgery, and Allison Anderson's successful surgery, for Mary McCulley's granddaughter, Holly, who passed from death to life. We give you thanks for her life. 
We thank you for Joshua and Zachary Elam and their birthdays, Judy Thomas's birthday and Peter McCulley's birthday. For these and for other thanksgivings, we hold them before you in celebration. Let us pray. Have mercy, mercy O oh God. God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who now rest from their earthly pilgrimage, that their lives of service and prayer inspire us in our living, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Praying together as Jesus taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will, will be done, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily, daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and, and the glory, glory forever, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Receive God's blessing. As you go on your way, may God go with you. May God go before you to show you the way. May God go behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over, within you to give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with our sending hymn. Christ and thanks, thanks be, be to, to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.